Amid Japan's legacy samurai history, an epochal disruption unfolded with the arrival of the enigmatic Amanto. Their advanced technology promised progress, yet also shattered age-old samurai customs that had been upheld for centuries. Amidst the massive changes that took place in Edo after the arrival of the Amanto, chaos grew. Injustices perpetrated by the Amanto became more rampant, fueling unrest among the population. In the shadow of such upheaval, the embers of resistance ignited into a blazing inferno with the onset of the Jui War. Samurai, stalwarts of tradition and guardians of honor, took up arms against the encroaching tide of Amanto dominance. However, despite their brave efforts, they found themselves outmatched and outnumbered, forced to yield to the relentless march of progress. With victory slipping through their fingers, the Amanto tightened their grip on power, imposing their will with unyielding severity. Any dissent against their authority was swiftly met with ruthless retribution, leaving those who dared to defy them to languish in the shadows of oppression. The prohibition against wielding swords struck a devastating blow to the very essence of the samurai's identity. The sword, symbolic of their courage and integrity, was cruelly stripped from their grasp, leaving the samurai at a crossroads. Bow to the Amanto's decree or uphold their sacred principles and confront the ensuing repercussions. Faced with such a daunting dilemma, numerous samurai opted to retreat into obscurity, reluctantly acquiescing to the Amanto's dictates. Thus, they faded into the shadows, mere remnants of a once illustrious era, crushed beneath the weight of relentless progress and shifting tides of time. Shinpachi, once a proud samurai reduced to the mundane role of a cashier by the sword ban, found himself mired in a monotonous daily routine of a tavern. Day in and day out, he had to endure insults and taunts from Amanto customers who looked down on him. However, his fate suddenly turned when a mysterious man named Jintopi Sakata, a legendary warrior from the Jui War, appeared at the tavern. In a bold display of courage, Jintoki confronted the Amanto who had belittled Shinpaki, wielding his wooden sword with unwavering resolve. With his sturdy wooden sword, Jintoki showed everyone that the rules of the Amanto could not extinguish the samurai spirit. The encounter marked a turning point in Shinpachi's life, prompting him to cast aside his former life and join forces with Jintoki as his loyal assistant. United by a shared desire to defy the injustices perpetuated by the Amanto, Shinpachi and Kagura, a formidable warrior with a compassionate soul, formed an unlikely trio. Together, they embarked on a journey fueled by the unwavering spirit of resistance, determined to challenge the oppressive regime of the Amanto and bring about change in their war-torn world. One day, Kagura invited them to search for beetles, which Jintoki and Shinpachi initially refused because they considered it an inappropriate activity for them. However, their perspective shifted upon catching wind of a television program showcasing the exorbitant prices fetched by giant beetles. Intrigued by the potential for profit and spurred on by newfound excitement, the trio set aside their reservations and embarked on a thrilling beetle hunting expedition. Carefully navigating through the dense foliage of the lush forest, Jintoki, Kagura, and Shinpachi decided not to go home until they found the giant beetle they were looking for. However, after hours of searching, they found no trace of the beetle. Kagura then had the creative idea to use honey as bait to attract the beetle. However, Jintoki vehemently rejected the idea, deeming it stupid and absurd. Later, they met a honey-covered figure in the forest, Kondo Izao, the police commander of the Shinsing Yumi. Shortly after, they crossed paths with the deputy commander of the Shinsing Yumi, who was busy smearing trees with mayonnaise to attract beetles. Perplexed by the peculiar antics of the Shinsing Yumi leaders amidst the wilderness, Jintoki and his companions found themselves at a loss for words. Their initial bewilderment quickly turned to surprise as they spotted a giant beetle clinging to a nearby tree. Reacting with exaggerated enthusiasm, Kagura delivered a mighty kick to the trunk, sending the beetle tumbling to the ground. However, their excitement was short-lived as they realized the beetle was unreal. Still, Okita Sogo, captain of the Shinsing Yumi's 1st Division, disguised in a beetle costume. Kondo and the Shinsing Yumi troops came to explain that they were tasked with capturing the Shogun's escaped pet beetle. Initially, Jintoki wasn't interested in it. Jintoki's expression underwent a rapid transformation when he learned that the beetle was a rare and valuable golden specimen. His spirit flared up. He was determined to capture the beetle at all costs, recognizing the potential wealth that awaited him if he succeeded. Chaos ensued as Jintoki and the Shinsing Yumi scrambled through the bustling streets in pursuit of the elusive golden beetle. The Shinsing Yumi troops were determined not to let the beetle fall into Jintoki's hands. Jintoki tried his best to catch the beetle that would make him rich. 
Amidst the swirling commotion, Jintoki found an unexpected ally in his old friend Katsura, a fellow samurai who had stood by his side during the tumultuous days of the Juwu War. Accompanied by his peculiar pet, Elizabeth, Katsura quickly deduced that Jintoki desperately needed assistance. Without hesitation, Katsura came to Jintoki's aid, fighting the Shinsengumi Yumi troops chasing him. With his stunning combat skills, Katsura swiftly defeated numerous Shinsengumi officers, leaving them in awe of his prowess. However, when Katsura saw Okita carrying a bazooka, he and Elizabeth decided to escape. Okita fired the bazooka at them, and Elizabeth sprang into action, deflecting the incoming threat with remarkable agility. Chaos ensued when a colossal fish emerged from the depths, snatching the golden beetle they had been fervently chasing. Instantly, their hopes of gaining wealth through the golden beetle were dashed. Disheartened by the unexpected turn of events, Jintoki, Katsura, and the Shinseng Yumi begrudgingly accepted the bitter reality that their aspirations of untold riches were nothing more than fleeting illusions. At night, Jintoki and Katsura sat together, reminiscing about the events that unfolded earlier that day. Katsura recalled their childhood, where the two of them often played beetles in the back garden of the school. The school where they grew up together was founded by a noble teacher named Yoshida Shudyu, who taught children from all backgrounds free of charge. However, the sweet memories were mixed with bitterness as they discussed the teacher's fate. Yoshida Shuyu was arrested and imprisoned by the government for teaching heresy and disobeying the shogun's orders. That was why, as adults, Jintoki and Katsura chose to fight against the Amanto who had taken control of the government, hoping to free their teacher from prison. Jintoki warned Katsura to be careful, given that there had been a mysterious murder recently. He left Katsura with that message, implying that their current world was unsafe and full of dangers lurking around every corner. With a heavy heart, Katsura bid farewell to Jintoki, realizing that they both still had missions to complete and dangers to face in the future. In the silent darkness of the night, the two of them continued their respective journeys, carrying the burden of the struggle that continued to haunt their minds. As Katsura stepped into the middle of the silent bridge, a sense of apprehension gripped his heart as the rhythmic cadence of approaching footsteps echoed in the air. Suddenly, a familiar figure named Nezu Okada appeared before him. Katsura recognized him immediately, a blind samurai rumored to be entangled in the web of enigmatic murders plaguing the city. With a calm demeanor, Nezu took out his purple flaming sword, then Izakura. Katsura braced himself, knowing he was about to face a powerful and dangerous enemy. Without a word spoken, Nezu attacked Katsura viciously with his flaming sword. The attack was so fast and powerful that Katsura found it difficult to dodge. Each strike of the flaming blade left Katsura struggling to evade. Yet, despite his best efforts, Katsura found himself succumbing to the overwhelming might of his opponent, collapsing to the ground under the weight of a deadly attack. Elizabeth came uneasily to Gintoki, Kangura, and Shinpachi's place. Yet back at their makeshift headquarters, they awaited Elizabeth's revelation with bated breath, puzzled by her uncharacteristic silence. They were surprised when Jintoki's phone suddenly rang. Jintoki then excused himself after receiving the call, explaining himself under the guise of attending to a job offer. Left to their own devices, Shinpachi and Kangura impatiently awaited Elizabeth's disclosure. Unbeknownst to them, Jintoki had gone to meet the renowned swordsmith siblings, Tetsuya and Tetsuko, who were famous sword makers. They asked for Jintoki's help to find a sword called Benizakura that someone had stolen. The Benizakura, with its ominous purple radiance, bore the weight of a dark legacy. This cursed heirloom sword spelled misfortune for all who dared to cross its path. Tetsuya recounted that their father died after making Benizakura, and from then on, anyone who got involved with the sword would face bad luck. Benizakura was considered a demonic sword that stole people's souls. Tetsuya enlisted Jintoki's help to find Benizakura before the sword caused further disaster. Undeterred by the daunting task ahead, Jintoki tirelessly searched thrift stores and pawn shops to find the elusive Benizakura sword. However, despite his best efforts, he saw nothing, leaving him disappointed and unsure of what to do next. Suddenly, Okita appeared before him, asking what Jintoki was looking for. Jintoki was always wary of Okita and his fellow Shinsing Yumi and did not want to tell him about his search. However, Okita warned Jintoki about a mysterious murder in the city, targeting samurai. According to rumors, the mysterious killer wields a purple flaming sword, which resembles Benizakura. Okita's warning added urgency for Jintoki to find the sword before it fell into the killer's hands. Elizabeth led Shinpachi and Kagura back to the bridge, which was the site of the attack on Katsura the previous night. Using a board, Elizabeth told them that Katsura was attacked. 
Shinpaki still could not believe that Katsura was deaf because he was a great samurai. Then, Kagura asked Sadaharu, her giant pet, to smell Kagura's thing and traced his position. Next to the shadowy bridge, Elizabeth and Shinpachi stood, their hearts pounding with tension as they scanned their surroundings. Suddenly, Nizu emerged, wielding the ominous purple glow of Benazekura's blade under the moon's light, delivering a deadly blow to his victim. Elizabeth, shocked by the violence, vanished without a trace. As Nizu threatened Shinpachi, Jintoki arrived just in time. Shinpachi realized that Naizu was a fugitive long sought after by the Shinsengumi forces. Nisu expressed his excitement at finally meeting Jintoki, and he saw Benizakura as the bringer of good fortune who lured the mighty samurai to come to him. With a chilling admission, Nisu revealed himself as Katsura's assailant, although Jintoki initially found it hard to believe that Nazu could overpower Katsura. However, Nisu then showed a lock of Katsura's hair as proof of the cruelty of his actions. Enraged and consumed by emotion, Jintoki launched a fierce assault on Nizu, fueled by profound anger. Although Nizu claimed that he was not the one who killed Katsura, the Benizakura sword itself, Jintoki still could not believe that Katsura could die at the hands of an assassin. Amidst the shroud of darkness, their clash intensified, with the truth hidden behind each sword strike exchanged. Suddenly, tentacles emerged from Nizu's hands, manifesting the Benizakura's influence over him. Jintoki and Shinpachi were shocked to see the sword's terrible power, which allowed it to control its new master awfully. As Kagura and Sadaharu continued to search for Katsura, they arrived in front of a large ship. Sadaharu smelled Katsura inside the boat for sure. Kagura immediately realized that they had to tell Jintoki about their findings. She told Sadaharu to inform Jintoki while she would try to get inside the ship to find Katsura. Meanwhile, the intense battle between Jintoki and Nizu raged on. Despite Nizu's blindness, Benizakura's power guided his relentless assault, keeping Jintoki on the defensive. The tension peaked when Nizu managed to break Jintoki's wooden sword and throw it into the river. However, Jintoki had not given up. Determined, he launched a counterattack, but the tentacles of Benizakura quickly blocked Jintoki's sword strike, leaving him helpless. Jintoki had no time to dodge when Nizu stabbed him with Benizakura's sword. Although Jintoki struggled to keep the sword from injuring him further, Nizu coldly declared that weak samurai were better off dead. Suddenly, Shinpachi jumped into the fight with his sword. With incredible bravery, he cut off Nizu's right hand with one sharp movement. The action caused Nezu to scream in pain. Okada and the Shinsengumi troops arrived just in time, making Nezu finally decide to retreat from the battle. Okita immediately reported his encounter with Nezu to Commander Kondo. As he spoke, Hijikata interrupted with another report revealing the return of Shinsu Takasugi, a formidable samurai known for his radical views and dangerous tactics. Shinsu was a former comrade of Katsura and Jintoki during the Jui War. However, among them, Shinsu was the most radical and risky. After disappearing for a long time, Shinsuke has reappeared with several of his comrades, including Nezu, Kichima Matako, famous for his shooting skills, and a strategist, Takeki Henpeda. Hijikata had a hunch that Shinsuke was planning something big, perhaps creating a new weapon and a rebellion. Kondo ordered Hijikata to gather as much information as possible about Shinsuke and his accomplices. Elsewhere, Kagura successfully infiltrated the ship and confronted someone inside with her umbrella gun, only to discover that it was Shinsuke himself. Before she could react, she was ambushed by Matako from behind, who opened fire on her. Despite Matako's relentless assault, Kagura displayed remarkable agility, easily dodging her bullets. A fierce skirmish ensued between Kagura and Matako, each aiming their guns at the other. As the battle raged, Takeki and his men surrounded Kangura. While Takeki found Kagura's actions endearing and urged his men not to harm her, Matako vehemently disagreed, insisting that Kagura's intrusion warranted her death. Kagura moved quickly to defeat all of Shinsuke's men, but was eventually hit by a shot from Matako and feel helpless. However, Kagura rallied with unwavering determination, wielding her umbrella with formidable skill and forcing her adversaries to keep their distance. Kagura entered the ship with steady steps, only to see something shocking inside. Matako immediately brandished her gun, declaring that she wouldn't let Kagura live because Kagura had figured out their plan. Meanwhile, Jintoki managed to survive Naizu's attack, albeit with serious injuries. Tei Shimura, Shinpachi's older sister, quickly intervened to prevent Jintoki from escaping. Outside, however, Shinpachi met up with Sadaharu, and together, they resolved to head towards the ship to rescue Kagura and Katsura. However, they faced a significant hurdle, how could they infiltrate the heavily guarded ship? 
Knowing Gintoki was incapacitated, Shinpachi realized he had to devise a plan to save his friends without relying on him. Inside the ship, Tekichi was furious with Nazu for his reckless actions, which had resulted in the loss of one of his hands after stealing Beniza Kura. Mataka was also worried that Naizu's actions last night could derail their plans. Suddenly, from Naizu's back emerged Benizakura's tentacles that strangled Matako. Niso revealed that the sword was gaining control over her body, warning her to comply or face dire consequences. He warned Matako to be nice to him because Benizakura would kill her if she didn't. Nisu arrogantly said Matako and Takeki should thank her for removing two mighty samurai. Despite his arrogance, Nisu's state was getting out of control by Benizakura's power, and the situation was getting tense inside the dark and mysterious ship. At home, Tetsuka arrived, and Jin Toki asked for an explanation about the Benizakura sword. Tetsuka began to share the sword's backstory. The Benizakura sword wielded by Nisu was a replica of the original, crafted by her father. This replica was equipped with artificial intelligence known as AI Soul, essentially turning it into a parasitic entity capable of controlling its user's body. Moreover, the sword could record battle data to enhance its capabilities, functioning as a sentient being. Tetsuka revealed that her brother Tetsuya collaborated with Shinsu to create the clone Benizakura. She even handed Jintoki an envelope with money, hoping he would intervene and port Shinsu and her brother's plans to engulf Edo in flames. Understanding Tetsuya's motives for involving him in the search for the Benizakura sword, Jintoki realized that Tetsuya had sought to test the sword's capabilities. Tetsuka confessed that she knew her brother's actions were wrong, but believed he had crossed a line this time. Tetsuka recounted that, at first, her brother was always compared to her father. Tetsuya strived to surpass his father's ability to make swords and eventually learn modern technology. However, Tetsuya began to come into contact with strangers who told him to make weapons to kill people. Tetsuka expressed her desperation, unable to thwart her brother's actions alone, and appealed to Jintoki for help. However, Jintoki flatly refused. He did not want to get involved any further. Jintoki then returned the envelope of money Tetsuka gave, and Tetsuka left with a heavy heart. Yet, Jintoki's refusal was a facade. He couldn't bear to see Tetsuka in distress, especially knowing the grave danger posed by Shinsuke and Tetsuya's plan. If he had said he was willing to help, Taishimura wouldn't have allowed Jintoki to leave. Secretly, Jintoki had slipped a message to Tetsuka in the envelope. The message contained a promise that Jintoki would help Tetsuka, even though Jintoki had to do it without Taishimura, knowing with the hope that the message would bring strength and hope to Tetsuka. With the explanation given by Tetsuka, Jintoki realized more and more how serious the threat faced by Ido was. He realizes that action needs to be taken immediately to stop Shinsuke and Tetsuya's evil plan, which would spell doom for the city and its residents. Determined, Jintoki bowed to protect Edo and his friends from the threat that threatened him. Outside, Taishimura had already deduced that Jintoki would come to Tetsuka's aid. Kondo, who had been eavesdropping inside Jintoki's house, emerged from his hiding spot after hearing Tetsuka's account. He understood the situation's urgency and the need for swift action to thwart Shinsuke's nefarious plan. Before meeting Tetsuka, Jintoki sought assistance from a mechanical expert named Jingai, hoping to acquire additional weapons to bolster their defenses. However, Jangai declined, citing that his workshop's resources belonged to others. Fortunately, Kondo intervened just in time, recognizing the gravity of the threat posed by Shinsuke. Boldly, he offered the support of his Shinsen Yumi troops to help Jintoki confront the danger. With their forces combined knowledge and skills, Kondo believed they stood a chance against Shinsuke's machinations. Gratefully, Jintoki and Tai Shimura accepted Kondo's offer, realizing the necessity of uniting all available resources to combat their formidable adversary. Inside the ship, Kagura found herself restrained by Matako, who demanded to know why Kagura was present. However, before Kagura could respond, she succumbed to nausea from overeating noodles earlier. Without mercy, Matako pointed her two guns. Suddenly, Shinpachi arrived undeterred and alone, determined to rescue Kagura. Their reunion was interrupted by a sudden jolt as a Shinsen Yumi police ship appeared, launching an attack. In the ensuing chaos, Shinpachi seized the moment to free Kagura. Finally, the Shinsen Yui ship flew away to avoid the Shinsen Yui ship's attack, and there was a chase in the air. The Shinsen Yui troop ship caught up with the enemy ship, and their attack set it on fire. Despite the chaos and danger surrounding them, Shinpachi and Kagura remained resolute in locating Katsura.
Drawing strength from their unwavering determination, Kagura remained steadfast in her belief that Katsura was still alive, relying on Sadaharu's instincts as their guiding light. As tensions escalated with the arrival of the Shinsen Yuni police, Shinpachi and Kagura pressed on in their search for Katsura, undeterred by the looming danger. With unwavering determination, they braved the difficult conditions, ready to confront whatever challenges lay ahead in their mission to rescue their comrade Katsura. Meanwhile, Jintoki and Tetsuka were at a loss on how to reach Shinsuke's ship. In a moment of inspiration, Tetsuka offered Jintoki her homemade sword to match the power of Ben Akira. Just then, Jengai appeared with Nausicaa's glider, providing them with a means of transportation. Mounted on the glider, Jintoki and Tetsuka soared towards the enemy ship, determined to confront Shinsuke and end his sinister plans. Above, Mizo, with his formidable tentacle hand, intercepted the Shinsengumi troops, deflecting Okita's bazooka shots with ease, setting the stage for a dramatic showdown. On the ship, Kagura led Shinpaki to the warehouse where Benazakura's swords were stored. Suddenly, Shinsuke made his dramatic entrance. Without hesitation, Elizabeth stepped forward to shield Shinpachi and Kagura, brandishing a gun from her mouth. However, Shinsuke effortlessly dodged her attack and swiftly struck Elizabeth, seemingly incapacitating her. Unexpectedly, Katsura emerged from within Elizabeth's costume, revealing himself alive. His presence sparked newfound hope in Shinpachi and Kagura, infusing them with determination to confront Shinsuke and his forces Hena. United in purpose, they braced themselves for the imminent battle, ready to defend Ido against the looming threat. As Takeki and Matako joined the fray, Shinsuke and Katsura unveiled a mysterious book bestowed upon them by their former teacher. The book shielded them from a fatal sword strike, saving their lives. Katsura confessed his genuine intention to thwart Shinsuke's plans, having feigned cooperation to gather vital information. With Shinsuke's departure, Katsura wasted no time giving chase, determined to end the looming danger. Meanwhile, Kagura and Shinpachi found themselves facing off against Matako and Takeki. Outside, Jintoki finally arrived and commanded the Shinsen Yuni police to stand down, intent on confronting Nezu himself. Drawing the sword given to him by Tetsuka, Jintoki prepared for the inevitable clash. Naizu, though blind, sensed the light emanating from Jintoki's blade, signaling the commencement of their duel. The battle was fierce, with Nezu reopening Jintoki's stomach wound while Jintoki managed to draw blood from Naizu's cheek. Both combatants fought with unwavering determination, each risking everything for their respective causes. Meanwhile, Shinsuke and Katsura observed the skirmish from below. Shinsuke remarked on Jintoki's stubbornness and the futility of facing Ben Izakura. Concerned for Nezu, Katsura feared being consumed entirely by the sword's control, predicting his eventual demise. Shinsuke acknowledged the risk Nisu took by wielding Ben as Akura, knowing the potential consequences. However, when Tetsuka pleaded with her brother, Tetsuya, to cease his actions, he blamed her for involving herself with Jintoki. Jintoki's defiance against Ben as Akura was futile in his eyes, and anyone who dared challenge it would meet their demise. During the intense battle, Tetsuya realized that Jintoki was their only hope in stopping the rampaging Nazu. Empowered by Jintoki's increasing strength and determination, Tetsuya provided him with a sword crafted by Tetsuka. Despite Naizu's relentless onslaught fueled by Benazakura's control, Jintoki's resolve to protect his comrades ignited a dormant fighting spirit. With unwavering determination, Jintoki managed to pierce Naizu's tentacle hand with his sword. However, Nizu, now entirely under Benazakura's sway, unleashed a furious assault on Jintoki, Takeki, and Matako. In a desperate attempt to shield Tetsuka from harm, Tetsuya sacrificed his own life, stepping in front of Nizu's blade. Regaining his senses, Jintoki seized Tetsuka's sword and pressed on with the fight, driven by a renewed sense of purpose and resolve to end the chaos wrought by Benizakura. In a counterattack, Jintoki and Nizu clashed swords again. However, the attack destroyed Benizakura and Tetsuka's swords. Finally, Nezu and Benazakura disappeared, leaving the battle peaceful and filling the silence again. In victory, they felt a profound loss for Tetsuya's sacrifice and relief that the danger had passed. Katsura tried hard to make Shinsuke realize his mistake, but Shinsuke remained stubborn. Katsura firmly said that he would not stand idly by if Shinsuke was genuinely intent on destroying Edo. However, his efforts abruptly stopped when a group of Amanto suddenly appeared and detained Katsura. It turned out that Shinsuke had been working with Amanto all this time, which made Katsura feel disappointed and devastated. Shinsuke and the Amanto left, leaving Katsura alone with his mind filled with despair and pain over his friend's betrayal.
After ensuring the safety of others from the ship, Jintoki confronted Shinsuke, condemning his compromise with the Amanto as a loss of pride. However, Shinsuke remained resolute, driven by a desire to dismantle the oppressive world that imprisoned their teacher. In contrast, Jintoki believed their duty was to protect the weak and uphold justice. Suddenly, the ship exploded and Katsura took advantage of the chaos to escape. Matako and Takeki then appear, protecting Shinsuke. Although Takeki tried to persuade Shinsuke to leave, Shinsuke challenged Jintoki to a fight. Their battle left them both gravely wounded. As the confrontation climaxed, Jintoki hesitated to strike Shinsuke down, flooded with childhood memories of their friendship. At that moment, the ship exploded once more. Shinsuke and his allies managed to flee. Using Elizabeth's parachute, Katsura and Jintoki escaped the destruction, sliding down to safety. So, what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you in the next video.